Okay, can we have a roll call, Kathleen? Commissioner Hernandez? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Commissioner Seifert? Commissioner White O'Neill? Here. Chair Dickerson? Here. Okay, um, if everybody's had a chance to read over the minutes from the September 20th meeting, we are going to need a uh, motion for those. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Motion carries. Public comment period. Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. These are for items that are not on the agenda. Is there anybody that would like to discuss anything that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, we will move along to the consent calendar. The consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are read only on request of commission members. Should anyone, including members of the public, wish to discuss or disapprove of any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered as a separate item. There's a single item, and um, is there anybody who would like to discuss it or pull it? No? No. All right, then we'll need a motion. I move that we approve the consent calendar. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Item number two, moving quite along here. Chavez Farming Planned Development Permit at 1965 Romer Place. Can we hear from staff? Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Um, this is the application for a plan development permit for Chavez Farming uh, to develop a one acre site. Uh, the site is located at 1965 Romer Place, and the site has a PDCM zoning or plan development commercial manufacturing zoning. Um, the area surrounding the site is a mix of industrial uses, all having the same uh, PDCM designation. However, the properties to the west are in the PDM1 or uh, light manufacturing district. Some of the neighboring businesses include uh, Tugzani's uh, business beverage service, right away trucking, and uh, coast equipment rental. Uh, the applicant proposes to construct a warehouse and office facility to be the operations center for Chavez Farming. Uh, here you see the site plan. Um, the warehouse building and office complex is in the northeast corner, or excuse me, northwest corner of the site. Uh, the eastern side of the site is the publicly accessible parking area and landscaping. And then the uh, southwest area is the storage facility or outdoor storage area. Um, the warehouse is proposed to be used to hold. Uh, Farm supplies, such as irrigation equipment, plastic sheeting, uh, picking and packing materials, uh, equipment for their employees, but all for Chavez farming use. Uh, daily trucks will deliver supplies to the various farm locations. Uh, so there will be some uh, truck activity. However, this facility is not a produce packing or distribution facility. Uh, nor will there be um, large amounts of any hazardous materials. It won't be a location where they store fertilizers or the like. Uh, the site has 34 uh, parking spaces, which is over what is required for the combination of office use and warehouse floor area. The warehouse is approximately 11,500 square feet. And the office is a two-story portion of the building, and it is approximately 4,500 square feet. Uh, the lower floor of the office is shown, and then the second floor, uh, also similar amount of office space, except the offices are a little bit larger and there is a conference room. And you can see the office portion of the building is the two-story uh, portion with the tower element. Uh, the warehouse is shown on the east elevation to the right-hand side, uh, and on the south elevation is uh, shown on the left-hand side. Uh, the office complex portion will be a stucco exterior with standing seam metal roof, 
and stacked stone wainscot. And the uh, warehouse portion is a metal uh, paneling product that the applicant will use. That same metal siding product is taken across and forms the wall, the screen wall of the uh, storage yard area. And you can see on the uh, east elevation on the left hand side. So here's some of the materials and a rendering of what the building will look like. Uh, you can see some of the colors proposed, the stack stone wainscot for the office portion. And then on the uh, uh, left hand side of the slide, there are two uh, block examples. Uh, the top one is a smooth face block. The lower one is a representation of split face. And those are going to be used on the uh, north and west property boundaries for the building. I'll go back to the site plan. The, uh, as you can see, the building is on the property line on the north hand side and on the west hand side. So those, uh, those building elevations need to be built of a sturdier material just for fire rating and so forth. So these are those elevations. Again, it will be a, a colored block, smooth face block for the body of the building. And then at the top parapet would be the split face uh, decorative block. Here you see the landscaping plan. Um, it, the uh, applicant provides 15% of the site as landscaping, which is the minimum. However, in most cases, our industrial sites do ask for a reduction in landscaping. This site has provided the, the minimum amount. And as you can see, most of the landscaping area is in the, the frontage towards the street, which will provide a good setting for the industrial building. There is some limited landscape uh, back adjacent to the uh, storage area or within the storage yard area. And so that concludes staff's presentation on this application. Uh, staff recommends the uh, Planning Commission approve uh, the plan development permit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions for staff at this time? I just had a technical question or a technicality question. I noticed that the project name and all of the paperwork is Chavez with an S, but the family spells their name with a Z. Is that is their business name actually spelled with the Z? Yes. Uh, apparently it is spelled with a Z. Okay. I apologize about that. Yeah, okay. So. And then um, I was there today and um, the other buildings, the other businesses in the Cul-de-sac. Right. They all have like big metal gates, which I assume are like electric gates, mm -hmm. and that's not being proposed here. Well, act uh, not for the perimeter of the site. The only area of the site that's going to be gated is the uh, enclosed yard area, which is on the yeah, in the side. the yeah. south. Uh, uh, West side of the. But the driveways are not going to have gates across them. No, the front parking lot will be um, open. Oh, this, there we go. So this is where the wall location will be. Uh, there is going to be a sliding or rolling uh, wrought iron gate that closes off this outside storage portion, but this portion will be open to the public essentially. Further questions? For yes. Staff? Do you know what the off the operating hours will be? I'm sorry. The operating hours. I the will hours have to defer to the applicant for that information. Okay. Any other questions for staff? And it says that they're going to store trucks, delivery trucks. Did they give you a number as well? Uh, they said a few, um, uh, not many delivery trucks, but not a specific number of trucks. No. Okay. Okay, why don't, why don't we go ahead and hear from the applicant then, sir, if you could state your name and address for the sure. record. My name is Gil Rodriguez. I'm the project designer. Um, and I could answer some of your questions, I imagine. Okay. As far as the uh, hours of operation, it's probably uh, 7 to 5. You know, there's no retail sales here, so it's just going to be minor amount of truck traffic coming in and out to support the field activity. 
And how many trucks do you plan to store there? Store? Or the, it says the delivery trucks. It's probably mostly going to be delivery trucks. There's really, uh, I mean, there's working trucks that will be stored in the back, I imagine, and used occasionally or, you know, but uh, there's no real storage per se. Okay. The intent is to have the trucks out in the field working. So this is just for farm supplies then? Yes. To mm -hmm. store the farm supplies? To support the farming operations, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the current operations are off of Meredith and Glosser, is that right? They have a facility on Tamalane. Tamalane. And so have they just outgrown that? Is They've outgrown it. Okay. Right. And how much bigger is this than what they currently have? Oh, it's much bigger. Um, I, I don't, yeah, can't imagine, but it's probably at least twice as big. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lopez? No. Um, so, um, and, I, and I think what uh, Commissioner Hernandez was asking, I mean, it's, I mean she, when she said storage, she means just parking overnight. How many, right. what, what type of, I mean, how many vehicles were we looking at? You were a little on the hazy side with your answer. Maybe three, there. four, okay. you All know, right. just, yeah, but there's no refrigerated trucks or anything out there running refrigeration or anything like that. Okay. I imagine there'll be three or four trucks in the back. Okay. At any given time, and that'll be screened from the street with the gate, with the rolling gate. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add uh, that uh, staff may not have covered, or uh, no? I think Frank covered it very well. Oh, there you go. Frank normally does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, you bet. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, any further uh, questions or comments from no. from the commission of of staff? Or, no. No. Okay, then uh, I will go ahead and uh, bring it back to uh, the commission. And um, if there's, uh, if anybody has any comments, they can make it. Otherwise, uh, we're looking for a motion. Uh, I move that we approve plan development permit PD 2017-0015 for Chavez Farming at 1965 Romer Place. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. All right, I have a first and a second. And uh, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. Number three, Beely Bradley Apartments Plan Development Permit at 1400 North Bradley Road. Frank again. There you go. You're the man of the hour. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, members of the commission. Um, this is a uh, proposal for an eight unit apartment project. Uh, the site is a triangular shaped site, as you can see here on the aerial. Uh, it's uh, approximately half an acre in size, and it is in the PD R3 or Plan Development High Density Residential District. Um, as you can see, the site is positioned on the north side of Bradley Road, and it is up against Highway 101 and the Donovan Road uh, freeway on ramp. And to the west is a uh, small lot, single family residential development. Uh, this That's project um, was in the site was originally approved in 2004 with a similar plan development permit. Uh, that permit was allowed to lapse by the owner in 2009. And um, this proposal is similar to that uh, 2004 project. As you can see here, uh, there are going to be eight apartment buildings in five uh, two-story um, buildings. Um, the uh, density of this site approximately is 14.4 dwelling units per acre, which is well under the 20 dwelling units per acre that's possible in the R3 district. Each building will be approximately 25 feet tall. Uh, there are 16 parking site or parking spaces on the site, uh, eight of which are uncovered, as you can see on the site plan. And the other eight are in a carport situation under building D and building A, where the first level is carports. 
Uh, buildings A and D on the upstairs will each have a single two-bedroom unit of approximately 1,000 square feet in size. Um, building B1 will have uh, separate two-bedroom, one-bath units. And this is building B1 here. Building B2 and building C, here's B2, here's building C, uh, will each consist of three bedroom, uh, one bath, a thousand square foot units on the first and second floor. The applicant is requesting a small um, uh, re reduction in the front yard setback for a small area of building B1 where it encroaches into the 20 foot front yard setback. Uh, it does so at an angle, and this is actually a stairwell portion of the building. And so staff is supportive of that reduction. Uh, one evident thing is the proximity to Highway 1 and the on-ramp here. Uh, as with the 2004 proposal, a sound wall is proposed along that boundary, along the west side of the project. Uh, that sound wall as recommended by the 2004 noise study, uh, was anywhere from 10 to 16 feet tall uh, from the elevation of these units. Uh, staff is um, obviously dedicated to enforcing the noise standards for residential properties, but those have changed over the years, particularly since that 2004 project. Uh, specifically, the outdoor noise standards have been reduced for multifamily projects such as this. Uh, indoor standards remain the same, however. Uh, for the indoor standards, uh, the 2004 noise study was recommending things like double pane windows and uh, special vents and so forth. Many of those types of things are now actually just base minimum building code items. Uh, plus, we have thicker walls for insulation and so forth. Uh, for those reasons, and also in an interest of seeing if we could get that sound wall lower, uh, staff has included a condition that the applicant update that noise analysis and provide us with those conclusions. And whatever those conclusions are, we will incorporate those at the time of building permit. But in no case will the wall be any higher than what was originally proposed along that freeway. Um, one other thing that staff did want to mention, um, so let me focus you on to this, the uh, western boundary. These are the single family residential lots. Um, these are the rear yard or rear property lines of those lots. The original application and this current application was keeping approximately a 20-foot setback. You can see a stairwell and a yard area encroaching a little bit in that area. Um, the applicant was having difficulty making some of the parking work. Also, uh, some of the conditions for our refuse enclosures, uh, the number of uh, roll-off bins that were going to need to be provided. Um, there were various things where the applicant was struggling. Uh, the applicant realized that this is actually a side yard of this lot. In the R3, a side yard is only required to have a 10 foot setback. Mm. Um, the rear yard is actually this back corner as per defined by our city code. Therefore, the applicant is looking to adjust the site plan from what is in the Planning Commission packet. Uh, so the buildings, here's a 10-foot setback line, this dash line there. Uh, the buildings will be approximately, or the minimum setback provided will be 12 feet. Staff is supportive of this change. One, it's still meeting code requirements. We are sensitive to the neighboring residential. However, with these buildings approaching that setback at an angle, uh, that reduces the, the visual mass uh, for these residents here. Also, there is a existing wall that was built along this perimeter of the residential development. My assumption is they built it with the assumption that nothing would ever be built on this property. Therefore, it was built like a sound wall. It is anywhere from 10 to 12 feet high. 
Um, the residents along this perimeter are only uh, 10 feet setback is provided to those residents. So here's a, the wall. As you can see, this portion here is approximately four feet. And this goes up to anywhere from between uh, 10 and 12 feet high. The homes only have a 10 foot rear yard. Uh, and then you're going to have another at least minimum 12 foot setback to these two story units. Um, with the combination of all those items, these neighbors are going to have limited views. And in addition, uh, there is going to be a row of trees along this perimeter. So even though it is getting closer than what was originally shown, it's still meeting the minimum code requirement, actually exceeding it a little bit. The way it's angled to these residences minimizes the impact, as does the existing conditions of this wall and the proposed landscape. So there again is the modified site plan. This does a number of things besides still addressing the residences to the west. It loosens up this area so the parking and circulation for vehicles can be revised and widened slightly. It accommodates uh, the, the common refuse bin enclosures. Uh, it does provide additional setback between the buildings and the freeway wall, which is a very tall wall. And the landscape area remains approximately the same. So there's still, I believe it was 40% landscape they were providing. So well in excess of the 20% minimum. And here is the landscape plan. You can see the, the trees are highlighted. Um, this is an older plan. They will need to meet the current uh, state requirements for water conservation and so forth. Uh, but there are large trees along this perimeter and uh, that will help screen uh, and lessen the impacts or visual impacts of these two-story buildings. And here we see the elevations. The applicant has, we did have a study session on this project a month or two ago. Uh, the applicant has enhanced some of the exterior. Uh, one thing that the staff had asked for with the initial application uh, the original application had a mix of stucco elements and siding elements, including having the lower portion stucco and the upper portion siding, which visually appeared very top heavy. Uh, so the applicant agreed to uh, go with siding on the entire exterior, which staff is, supports. They've added trim around the windows, uh, detailed vents, They've added shutter details, uh, both on the second floor and first floors. And they have uh, gone to a high definition uh, shingle roofing product. So here's some of the color samples. There'll be two uh, color schemes, depending on which buildings, mm. and then high definition shingles uh, that will give some uh, good shadow line and, and so forth on that roof element. And so that concludes uh, staff's presentation on this project. Um, staff is recommending the Planning Commission approve the project. And I'm available for any questions. Commissioners have any uh, questions for staff at this time? Yeah, in the report you wrote that park, guest parking, there was no guest parking, but that you're relying on the street parking for guests. Correct. Uh, no guest parking is required Correct. on this type of project. Uh, because of the bend in Bradley Road, mm -hmm. um, the area in front of the project and to approximately here is no parking on both sides of the road. However, beyond along Bradley Road, there is street parking available on both sides of the street um, up into the project boundary. Um, again, no part guest parking is required of the project and there is parking availability close to the, the project site. On commercial projects, we allow remote parking lots within 200 feet of the storefront. And so this would meet that requirement, even though this is not the same 
type of project, but similar kind of an idea where people aren't walking too far away if they need to park on the street. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, could you just do a little, explain a little bit more about the noise requirements? Because when I was there, I mean, it's crazy loud and <laughs> it's only, I'm sure, louder than it was in 2004. Traffic on the 101 mm -hmm. is, you know, only going to get more. Sure. So um, for the for residential properties, our general plan and our zoning ordinance have um, decibel readings. Mm -hmm. um, and there are separate decibel readings for outside spaces versus inside spaces. Mm -hmm. And then for our three projects, um, I believe it was in 2012, um, recognizing the urban nature of our community, we allowed a reduction, or I should word it, allowed for louder outside environments in our three parcels. But no, um, no change to inside? No change to inside. Uh -huh. Okay. When the 2004 project came in, they did a, a noise analysis, mm -hmm. an acoustic analysis, and that's where the 16 foot plus or minus height uh, sound wall for mm -hmm. the freeway side was recommended. And that's where they recommended certain architectural um, design and products to help mitigate noise inside. Um, jump to today our noise standards for outside has gone up so potentially the the sound wall might be modified and hopefully lowered because we don't a 16 foot sound wall is a monolith that we're not that interested in correct okay, it's a right. large wall um, as i noted the subdivision adjacent had a wall that was 10 to 12 feet high oh, okay. hopefully this wall can be reduced to that height and okay. still meet the outside noise requirements and as I noted, um, since 2004, building codes have changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and inside spaces by default are less noisy, uh, or they do a better job at mitigating noise coming from the outside. Right. And so in, in those cases, um, uh, the staff is required in the plan development permit that an update to that noise analysis be done Right. Um, including having the architect sign off on the plans that they will meet the interior noise standards mm -hmm. and um, also documenting that the wall that is eventually proposed and designed for that freeway perimeter be tall enough to, to mitigate noise, yet at the same time not, not hopefully be less right. tall than it is. And then the building design, the, the buildings that actually but the freeway correct are mm -hmm. one of them is a two-story building but it's window it has limited windows on the freeway side right well all the buildings are two-story um, oh that's right but okay and so building a and building c do have limited openings on, on the freeway side which is one way to help but control at their tallest they're still going to be taller than a 12-foot sound wall correct the the top pitch of the building is uh, 25 feet and so uh, I'll need to look at the plan for the height of this um, but obviously yeah these these windows will be above whatever wall height gets constructed okay. now this is just an example elevations these are not the elevations facing the freeway these are actually the elevations you'll see from Bradley Road right. um, but yes typical window height would be about here and um, so, yeah, those openings would be above the wall height. And that's where multi-pane windows mm -hmm. come into play. Um, sometimes what they'll do is require that some windows facing the freeway side not be openable, Open. right. but that uh, fresh air be um, uh, supplemented with bigger AC units and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, there's various ways that that sound can be mitigated through architecture. Mm -hmm. And the conditions require they do anything that's necessary to have that inside meet the noise standard. Mm -hmm. And so the assumption is the new noise study will, nothing's changed. I mean, the noise is still gonna be the same noise as it was, if not more than it was in 2004. Correct. But the builder will come up with a solution to 
solve the noise problem while keeping it as attractive as possible. And we have every expectation that that's doable. Yes. Okay. Because the 2004 noise analysis concluded that yes, the exterior site and the interiors would comply with city code. And that was with the, the taller wall and the older building standards. Okay. So staff is confident that um, whatever the new analysis will provide, mm -hmm. the applicant will be able to meet it. Okay. Uh, the condition does say on the wall that it shouldn't be any higher than 16 feet. I don't anticipate this happening, but if for whatever reason the new analysis says we need a 22 foot wall, uh, we'll be coming back to planning okay. commission for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, ha I have just a, a real quick question on the on the noise study, and I, I guess maybe it's for the architect. Um, Tom, you guys are getting a new noise study, and do you think, with your experience, do you think that the area between the two buildings where there's mainly parking, do you think that wall can reduce since since the the sound waves are really going to go back to the buildings that the, that are further west? You know what I'm talking about the. There's there's buildings, a wall between the buildings that didn't, didn't make. Yeah, there's you have parking between the two buildings A and C, and mm -hmm. your your civil plans call out anywhere from 14 to 18 foot tall walls. And I was just thinking, I mean, just economics. If you can get those walls down between the two buildings, when you pull into those parking spaces, you're not looking up at a 16, 18 foot wall. Well, for the record, my name is Tom Martinez, 2624 Air Park Drive, architect on the project. <clears throat> um, because of the, requ of the request for the updated sound report and realizing that that was a very tall wall, what we've, author what we've authorized David Lord, who's the acoustics engineer, to do is do a performance evaluation so that we can see not just by meeting the minimum requirements for the sound, but if there are ways that we can increase the deadening elements in those walls that are facing the freeway, if we can increase that and, and lower the wall, that's what we would like to do. But again, there comes a cost cutoff where you've right. got to just draw the line and say, this is how high we've got to go. Okay. okay. Thank you. Further questions of staff? I've got a I've got a couple of uh, questions. I, I I have a couple of concerns on this project. Not, nothing, frankly, nothing that is going to rise to the level of, of, of me not voting for it. But um, I just wanted to ask staff. The, the first is um, landscaping. That uh, when we shift from the twenty foot on the uh, which side? yeah there we go to the ten foot. Is there going to be any decrease in landscaping, or is that is it going to be maintained at the same level that it was at the 20 foot? Uh, staff anticipates first off that there shouldn't be any uh, area reduction in the in the landscaping because everything is merely shifted, um, except for perhaps a little bit of loss of area for the refuse enclosures. Okay. Um, however, the the uh, landscaping. Um, should be easily adjusted to still fit within that within the 10 foot gap. Most of the landscaping trees here are at or beyond the 10 foot setback or right at the 10 foot setback, I should say anyway. So those shouldn't have to be moved or re removed. And what size trees are we looking at there? Um, all the trees proposed are 24 inch box and um, we typically, when we receive a plan like this and we know that there's screening necessary, we ask for non-deciduous -decidu trees. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's year-round screening. Um, so staff will be doing that when we get the plan. Okay. Um, and I know at study session, I think I was one of the people that, that commented on it. I, I mean, the, the buildings just for me are, are outdated. I mean, I think they're not terribly imaginative and, and, and outdated. So I do know that we have had a few things added to it, some details um, added, and I just want to get the impression from staff. I mean, is there, are you, I hate to put you on the spot. I mean, are you, are you satisfied with the additional elements that, that kind of spruce this up enough or, or could more have been, been well, done? 
in uh, the opinion of staff, the applicant has definitely um, enhanced the elevations from our first application. Um, the shutters, the bigger framing around the windows, uh, the fact that uh, siding's been used throughout makes it a little bit more unified, not so choppy, not so top heavy. And then the fact that we've also got um, better roofing materials. Uh, I think the project has improved quite a bit. Um, as to style, yes, it, it is probably what one would call a dated style uh, using siding and, and so forth where and then the and I, I don't know what kind of style to, to call this but but the style that you see here is is dated. that's certainly right. a you know it had a time frame when this was a popular type of thing but it is a style and it is something that will um, be attractive it's not discordant with the neighborhood it, it will fit within the neighborhood um, if anything, it might make the development look like it's always been there. Um, uh, and, and no offense is meant by that, but it is a, a different style. Well, to get lemonade, anything lemonade out of lemons, isn't it? To, to get anything different, I would say that you, a project would essentially have to start over and, and think in terms of more modern. Um, exterior architecture, more modern layouts or spaces. Um, and again, this is a small site, individual small buildings. Um, for instance, if this were to come to us on a one of the, the small um, lots to the south of us or, or near our western perimeter where it may be a 60 by 100 foot lot and they're adding a, a couple of units, this would be a perfectly acceptable architectural design to add to an existing neighborhood like that. All right. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. So, um, are there any written communications or comments? No. Um, actually, I should go back. Tom, is there anything else you want to add to, to what uh, has been? I just need, I think, to make one point of clarification. Uh, Frank mentioned that there was no landscaping being, that was not being reduced. That is, in fact, well, when we found, and I guess I'm fumbling for word, um, we inherited this project. There was another developer from the area that uh, originally got it approved. And so we were trying to just work with what had been approved. It wasn't until we, uh, the, the current conditions in terms of the uh, trash roll-off cans came up where we had to add additional cans that we started playing with the site trying to fit the additional spaces in. And that was where I found that on that one west side yard, they had put it in as 20 feet and I thought, wait a minute, that should be 10. And so we did have, have that additional space. In shifting those buildings that we did, we actually pulled all of them back three foot so that the driveway is between the back out space of the uncovered parking is three foot deeper than what it was because with the original approval, it was only 25 feet, which is tight. So we thought we have the flexibility. Uh, the And I don't know the exact number, I believe the original landscaping design was like 35 to 40 percent, far greater than the 15 percent minimum requirement. So we Frank, did not... said it, Frank said it was 40 percent. So okay, okay, well, so so moving that, let's say losing that three foot strip by eight spaces, uh, does not affect the overall landscaping, and the perimeter landscaping doesn't change. Okay, are you you're aware aware of that? Right. So what Tom is saying does does make sense. They did widen um, this drive aisle. He's saying by three feet. So let's say this was maybe uh, 100 feet. So that's 300 square feet approximately. Uh, the site originally was providing approximately 9,850 square feet of landscaping. And again, that was 40%. So a uh, 300, 500 square foot reduction 3%. is still going to land them well above the 20% that's required. Okay. 
if it's about a 3% loss, then something like that. Give or take. 10% loss, maybe, <laughs> at, the, at the very most. Three, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Anything further? No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have any written communications or comments? No? All right. Then uh, why don't I go ahead and bring it back to the commission? And uh, are there any commissioners who would like to make any comments or ultimately a motion? I do have one question about the graffiti. How often is a graffiti being cleaned up right now? Is that a big issue there? I don't have any information about um, the rate of incidents or the number of incidents. Mm -hmm. um, the original project uh, did require that the wall be three feet off of the right-of-way line with the, the freeway, Caltrans, essentially. And that was to allow the applicant to put landscaping and irrigation on the freeway side of the wall. Um, I don't have a picture of the residential uh, subdivision wall, but I know all along this per perimeter facing Donovan, they have vining plants. Um, you can still see the wall in places. Um, and that, I believe, has been the historic method of trying to prevent graffiti on walls is to plant vines. Um, <laughs> we've conditioned the applicant to do that. Um, we're going to be working with the applicant, obviously, on the height of the wall. Uh, the applicant is also going to be working with Caltrans in terms of a setback off of the Caltrans right of way. If it turns out that the wall, uh, Caltrans is going to allow the wall closer to the property line, uh, the applicant was very kind to take these photographs of uh, nearby freeway walls. And as you can see, there's holes incorporated into the wall, mm -hmm. and the planting is actually coming up over the top and also then through these mm -hmm. gaps in the wall. Um, you can see there's no, no room for planting on this side of the freeway. Mm -hmm. So the applicant is proposing rather, if they're allowed by Caltrans to get closer, rather than have that set back uh, from the right of way, they would like to push the wall further towards the Caltrans property line or their property line, and then incorporate uh, a method similar to this and planting along that wall on the inside, which will eventually grow up over and through the wall to help address graffiti issues. Okay. Thank but you. I do know that graffiti is an issue along the highway, along all of our sound walls, um, other than the requirement that the applicant has to repaint or paint over or pressure wash, uh, however it's done to, to get rid of graffiti. Uh, I believe there's a 48 hour requirement imposed by our uh, code compliance group. Um, the only other method that we know of is is planting. Okay. I was just wondering if they were going to paint every day, because sometimes the graffiti artists think it's art, and they go out and, you you know, it's like a game. They keep going back. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that, I believe, is why the code compliance asks that they, uh, property owners address graffiti and remove it as quickly as possible so you don't have that continuing uh, revisitation of the uh, location by other and, and the same gang members, apparently. So. <laughs> um, just in a, as a response, when I was at the site, the wall that actually separates the single family housing there, the big 10 to 12 foot wall, I was surprised that there was no graffiti on it at all. Uh, and it didn't look like it hadn't been splotchy painted over a million times. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of other unsavory things going on in that lot but the but no graffiti on that wall so that was a good sign you, you don't want to elaborate no you can use okay. your imagination <laughs> any other comments no no all right in that case we're going to need a motion i move that we approve Bailey Bradley Apartments, Plan of Element Permit at 1400 North Bradley Road, Permit Number PD 2016-0013. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, Tom. All right. Um, item number four has been pulled, my understanding, and we will see that uh, down the road, probably at the uh, November 15th meeting. Is that correct? November 1st. 
November 1st. Uh, uh, November 1st. November so 1st. The next public meeting is November 15th. So. Do we have to make a motion to continue it? or? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. I make I move that we continue plan development permit PD 2017-00011 to the November 1st okay. public hearing. Can I can I just say the the bottom Second. of our jur of our of our um, thing agenda. says that the next public the agenda is next says oh, the next yeah. public meeting is the 15th is yeah. it the 15th or the 1st? Yeah, you're right. It's the 1st? Okay. First. Okay. So First. Okay, go ahead. So. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All, all abstain. And uh, one abstain. One, I, I recuse myself. Got it. Okay. And one abstention. Moving on to other business, oral reports from planning commissioners and staff. Do we hear, have any, um, anything from staff? No? <laughs> Ryan, John, whoever. <laughs> I can jump in. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, my name is Ryan Hostetter, and I'm your new planning manager. Um, I'm humbled to be here and excited to work with the team. I do have some updates, a handful of them, to provide for you from the team. Um, I'll just jump into those really quickly. Um, we have our downtown streetscape plan, a charrette schedule that I wanted to make you aware of. And this is quick uh, next week. Um, Monday, the, it uh, looks like 5 o'clock, there's a public workshop. Um, Shepherd Hall Public Library from 6, well, this says 6 to 8 p.m. on here. So 6 to 8 p.m., not at 5. Uh, and then it looks like uh, also um, the schedule continues for that project Tuesday as well, another public workshop um, from 6 to 8 p.m. again. So two next week in the evening. And then Tuesday, October 24th, in the morning, there's a coffee open house from 9 to 10 in the Community Development Conference Room. So those are three um, public events for that project um, for public comment are, are we going to be emailed about that with any details or was there an invitation that went out or i, I just i didn't I see i didn't see any notice you know i will confirm with netta on that and um and we'll email that to you all yes okay. mm -hmm. so in addition um we have our our upcoming hearings um we we have a study session tomorrow um two items lakeview apartments and um skyway office building so that's not a hearing it's a study session um we have a hearing on november 1st and the item that was continued from today the sober living facility will be on that date um, and the massage ordinance is also scheduled for November 1st. Mm. So those are two items. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Phil, if there, he can be no. <laughs> unsavory. Yeah. Actually, Speaking of unsavory. This is a new one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, <laughs> members of the commission, it's actually not the massage regulations. It's the zoning of massage businesses in the city, which is why it's coming to you. Thank you. It sounded much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Massage <laughs> ordinance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then um, November 15th, you have a larger agenda. Um, let's see, two, three, four, five, six items, two of them con on consent. Um, the Sierra Madre Cottages and Steve Central Coast detailing our consent items. And then you have four hearing items. Pepper Tree Chevron Project, um, mm -hmm. Skyway Office Building, which mm -hmm. um, will be on study session tomorrow. Right. Yep. Um, and the Chavez um, General Plan, a, a zoning amendment project. And the ADU ordinance, which is um, also for November fifteenth. Ryan, what's the what's the cottages that's on the what's what is that that's on the consent? Let's see. Did we have we seen that? We've seen it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frank will have to help me out with this one. <laughs> uh, so that was a a, a project uh, for um, associated with Bethel Lutheran Church. Oh, that's right. It was the affordable okay. um, housing project. 
that people self-help housing, I believe, is right. in control of now. Mm -hmm. um, they're just asking for an extension of time mm -hmm. for okay. their approval. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. And those are all, all of my updates. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you're all aching to get out of here, but I've got a couple through. Is, is there any uh, anything from commissioners? No. I, I had one thing that yes, might not be so quick. Just listening, uh -oh. listening to the radio on uh -oh. Monday. Uh, listening to the radio on Monday, a lot of people were concerned about the off ramp at Better Avia um, and uh, 101 because of when you're, when you're trying to pull off, you're actually backing onto the yep. radio. I've been there and it's not very it's not on the safe. southbound side. Heading southbound, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, it, it's stacking up all the way down. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I don't know if David has any updates for that. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Tom Lopez, um, I was kind of hoping to get through the meeting without saying anything. <laughs> close. I joke. So close. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. Staff in the engineering department are are, are presently in the working with uh, Caltrans for a design to help alleviate the issue that's happening there. Do what will happen is in that particular location will include a right turn lane. So there will be a dual left turns, dual lefts heading eastbound on Betteravia, and then two dual rights that will go uh, to, to address the, the issue that you're uh, talking about. I know as a resident in the general area, there is, we have concerns. Yeah. We've heard it from the general public, and um, we're in the process of, of providing a, a fix to that. It will also include dual, if you can imagine, um, dual, the extension of dual, the dual lefts that are on the freeway on the overpass will extend westerly in that general area right where um, Coast Hills, Front and Coast Hills and, and um, the Habit Lows. Mm -hmm. So you'll have an extension of the dual lanes, dual left that will take you onto the freeway for northbound traffic. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a significant improvement. We're in the um, design phase. We've submitted it to Caltrans, and our goal is to get it out to bid ASAP. And um, our, our hope is to get it uh, approved in the spring and then get it in construction shortly thereafter. So... Um, the improvement is, is speaking of that um, have have there have there been any studies now that um, Costco's open Lowe's has opened it seems that the intersection at Betteravia and uh, college the south side of that intersection on the weekend anyway with um, Walmart Home Depot Lowe's Costco the the traffic is backing up significantly Specifically, I think because there's only one straight lane, mm -hmm. you know, there's a mandatory right turn, two left turns, and one straight. So if you're going from the Walmart side over to Costco, the traffic is backed up, like, to the roundabouts. It's, it's has, is that being correct. looked at or reanalyzed at correct all? Correct me if I'm wrong. It, you had mentioned Betteravia and College. It's Betteravia and Bradley? I mean, Betteravia and Bradley, okay, yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. As part of this... Uh, Design that we're looking at. It's we're also looking at the that intersection as well for improvements. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying. And mm -hmm. I, I live in the general area, and so it's it's um, it's interesting the traffic patterns of people, how they they go about and, and move in the area. But that is that is on the on the list of things. It's on everyone's radar. Okay, okay, good. Absolutely. Uh, one one more question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, when is college going to be done? That is a good question. Um, go. Right now, there's there's been some progress in the curbs. For the medians have been installed, and so our hope is, and I, I couldn't, I, to be quite frank with you, I don't have a, a, an exact date, but it's 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 on a high priority list because it has been um, grinded and it's it's been sitting for a little bit longer than than we would have uh, wanted, mm. and so it's it's a priority project that we've um, um, uh, communicated with the with the contractor to let's get moving. We, mm -hmm. we want to get that improvement as, as soon as possible, and I think once that once that once that improvement goes in, I think that it will help to alleviate traffic on on Bradley. The, the, the problem when there's that, another that yes. south exactly thoroughfare. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. One, one hopes. <laughs> yeah. Have have you received complaints regarding the 
entrance to Costco? Because I've received about three or four. We have. And I've got two more right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting when, when you have a new facility open up, and I think one of the, one of the it was interesting, one of the com, uh, complaints that we did receive, imagine you're getting gas in Costco, and as you leave, mm -hmm. uh, most would think that, okay, I, I can only turn right because the median's there. Mm -hmm. and so there were some concerns that, Shouldn't there be a one-way sign there? And so that was immediately installed. It wasn't initially installed, but it was we put that in to help clarify to the motoring public what what you're supposed to do. Well, in theory, you can't make a U-turn yep. off off the. You, you can't Correct. make a U-turn either. You after, cannot. Yeah. You can't if, in leaving and, and going on to Bradley. You can't make a U-turn right. at the left turn pocket. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I saw that. And um, I understand it happens, though. It, <laughs> it happens. Not naming and, names. Unfortunately, I haven't heard any accidents, so that's a good thing. But quite frankly, I believe that once college opens up, I think they'll, they'll provide uh, a lot more avenues for, for the motoring public to, um, to access in and out, coupled with um, I think people are getting used to how do I get there? What's the easiest way to get there? Mm -hmm. um, one thought is, well, gee, there's, a, there's some folks that are coming in from the north side mm -hmm. from where the old Costco is at. And perhaps there's an opportunity, maybe because of the issues that are happening at Betaravia, I'm the modern public is, doesn't travel that way. So let's go an alternative route. And perhaps when, when the improvements is are made there, it'll kind of vet itself out. Mm -hmm. So usually, typically, when, there, when there's a new development, people will find their way. It's almost, you know, if you can think back, going back to when Costco came in at its former location, there was, I mean, it was quite a, uh, a um, not a struggle, but just, okay, which, which is the best way to go, to go in and enter? And park and exit and whatnot. Yeah, I but, think I think it's an improvement. I actually like it better, I, um, and I think it's just because people think they have to enter where the front is, but there's entrances. There's the gas station entrance. Well, too. and there's entrance yeah. closer to the freeway, which is easy. You're in, you're out. There's nothing to it. But I think people don't realize that's there yet, and they're they think, oh, but that's so far from the entrance. Well, you just drive over to the entrance it's no big deal <laughs> agreed i mean quite frankly for, personally i i i'm myself i've have been there to costco at least three or four times and i'm trying to figure out where's the best place to come in and where's a good and so i i think it's and people are figuring that out right now and so i think it'll give it a little time i think it'll 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 let itself out and, mm -hmm. and people will yeah. further will find their comments? way okay yeah. Um, I've, I've got a couple, three here. Uh, the first is uh, I just wanted to recognize that uh, Bill Orndorff passed away um, a couple of months ago. And I, I know I just saw it and, and we just had our meetings, et cetera, back in mid-August. Um, for those who don't know, Bill was the director of the community development um, department, uh, not just planning, but the, but the whole thing. And he was with the city from 81 to 2003. Wow. Um, he advocated uh, for the downtown revitalization, so, uh, uh, and his goal was to create a distinct identity for Santa Maria and his influence can be seen around the city and the towers, the bike mm -hmm. paths, and the roundabouts. Mm -hmm. um, Bill had a knack for architecture. He would improve a building easily using his eye for detail, and he always fought for better landscaping in Santa Maria. So uh, uh, this was a public servant that improved our community. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I feel badly that he has passed away, but uh, I wish him Godspeed. And when was this? Uh, like Mid-August, August 16th. Jeez, I had no idea. Um, the other thing, it was, it, or the second thing, is strictly a factoid, and I thought you guys might might be interested in this particular small group of people. Um, with all of the horrible things that were going on in uh, Las Vegas recently, uh, there was a, a minor factoid that came up which was very interesting to me, and that was that um, the Las Vegas Strip has something in common with Santa Maria in that 
Uh, the Las Vegas Strip actually is not owned by the city of Las Vegas. Mm, it's, 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 owned by the, it's owned by the county. Mm. And so all those tax revenues, those <laughs> are going to the county and the city kind of gets those ancillary kind of rummy, you know, places <laughs> off to the side. <laughs> um, so I just thought it was, was kind of an interesting thing. Um, and the final thing was uh, Mr. Seifert had brought up at the last uh, meeting, um, he, he kind of questioned whether or not we should move our meetings to 530. Um, I think that's something that we ought to put up on a study session and just ask staff whether that'd be convenient for them, be convenient for us, convenient for the, the public. And so um, I would appreciate that being put on, I don't know if I guess that needs to be agendized, so we can't do it tomorrow, but we could, I guess. We, okay. Okay, so the, the, the following study session after that, if we could. But the problem is, traditionally, you don't really take action at a study session, although but it is but just to discuss it. Uh, uh, the, yeah. debate, the debate. Yeah. We could discuss, discuss it. Um, yeah. Although I, I don't see why you couldn't take action on, on an item like that since it's not about a project. It's, but so we might be able to take action. Maybe I'll session. look into that and see okay. if we can take action. But okay. we can certainly discuss it. All right. So anyway, if we could uh, put that on the uh, study session agenda for uh, not uh, November 1st, but the one following that, I appreciate it. Okay. And, and Chair Dickerson, uh, if, if you don't have any more comments, I, I do not. neglected to provide some updates from last night's council meeting. Mm, please. Uh, last night's council meeting, we had the downtown mixed use project go before the council. And the, the action that was taken, that the council um, continued the item. There was a there was a lengthy discussion uh, among the council members, and uh, there were uh, ongoing concerns about parking, and so uh, so it's been it was continued, and also I'll, I'll let Phil mention the uh, talk about the moratorium. Thank you, Jen. Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Last night, the City Council approved an urgency ordinance placing a temporary moratorium on accessory dwelling units. Mm. The specific action taken is the staff can continue to process and accept applications for building permits for these. However, they just can't issue any permits that would lead to the entitlement to establish, create a, a, an accessory dwelling unit. Councilmember Boyson uh, uh, joined the majority on the, on the understanding that staff would be bringing an ordinance for this topic by, in sometime in December. According to the director, uh, that will happen in December. It will be hopefully coming to you. Well, it will be coming to you in November. Uh, I'm not sure the date, but we need to have you take a look at the st staff's been working very hard on it, uh, although we did get a late start, but it's a good ordinance. It's the state doesn't give us much room to maneuver on this topic, uh, but I think we've done a fairly good job. Uh, the latest delay was that a couple of bills were passed called cleanup bills that actually kind of were more than just cleanup legislation. They kind of moved it forward. The uh, what 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 even put more restrictions on what the cities can do. So we need to modify the ordinance slightly. And what was the grounds for the emergency moratorium? Well, we were just because we aren't prepared. We aren't prepared. There's okay. a number of uh, permits that are about to issue, uh, and and the, mo the main concern of staff, and what we want to have the council to have a choice to act on, is we believe that in order to preserve the character of a R1 neighborhood as much as possible. Um, Excuse me, gentlemen, could you take, could you take that outside? We appreciate it. Thanks. Um, in order to preserve the character of an R1 neighborhood to the extent possible, uh, we believe that an owner occupancy requirement of either the primary or mm. the secondary unit would be helpful. And we have some technical issues that we're going to also address in the ordinance, but that's the main reason why we, we felt we had to take action, because if, if we create a bunch of these uh, ADUs that are able to be rented out, we feel they're going to contribute to a decline in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it? We're adjourned.